This video is going to show how you can throw an altar on the wheel to create a square pot with a thrown flat bottom. Uh, this is thrown from a cylinder that I square up and attach it to a thrown disc. Now, if you need to review any of the throwing basics, just uh, check up above and um, do check out my uh, uh, wheel throwing playlist. Um, it reviews all the basics of, you know, centering and throwing and pulling, things like that. Um, I'm just going through this at a much faster speed. This is uh, sped up. And I am going to be throwing a open bottomed cylinder. So as I make my large hockey puck, I'm going to be dropping the middle all the way to the bat. And it is important that you are centered at this point. So you want to, you know, just double check your centering. As I open this up, I am pressing on the uh, interior edge to try to make sure that I don't get a weird little edge that's raising up. I open it up to the desired diameter on the interior and then I just pull up the walls. Now one thing that I'm doing a little differently on this is I'm leaving the base of the walls just a little bit thicker. I'm, I'm leaving a bit of a flared edge down there at the bottom. Uh, some people might refer to it as a little skirt of clay. I sometimes refer to it as like that little bottom of a mountain of clay. So even though the top of the wall might just be between three-eighths of an inch and a quarter inch thick, the base of the wall is going to be closer to three quarters of an inch thick. Now, after I have it thrown, I am just trimming away some of the excess from the outside, um, and then I'm going to cut it. But in order to get the wall to move, I'm going to add a little water to the bat. That way, when I slide the, um, the clay, it kind of slides on the water. So here, I'm just approximating where I want those corners, and I'm trying to square it up. Put my fingers on the inside and also press my hands on the outside but notice that I just dried my hands because if you try to do this with slip all over your hands you really do make a mess so once I get that squared up to my satisfaction then I'm just gonna set it aside and let it start to stiffen up some now for this next one I'm going to throw the disc that goes underneath so the disc has to be wider than the walls uh, that I just threw and for this one you can pretty much throw this as a plate except I'm not going to put a rim on it so if you would like to use the uh, wooden dowel rod you could use the wooden dowel rod to um, make that go down at this point and I'm just grabbing the rod make sure you have plenty of oh and I do anchor my hands to the splash pan there again this is on high speed so the speed that you see there isn't realistic so I flattened it out, and if it's a little wonky, it doesn't really matter. And there I just put a little spiral with my damp sponge, and I'm going to cut that and also let that kind of set up and get closer to leather hard. And once they are leather hard, then uh, we can start to look at uh, getting them together. So once they're leather hard, I just kind of place it on there, um, and I'm going to mark it, uh, so when I placed it on there, it kind of left an impression. So I'm scoring really heavily. And notice that I am using the spiral side as the top side of my bottom, so it's going to be decorative on the inside. And I, I'm really aggressively scoring. So when you score these two, um, it should look really heavy. And notice, again, the wall thickness is about 3 quarters of an inch. The reason I do that is I don't have to add a coil. And here I'm just adding some thick slip because I really want this to um, mush together nicely. And I, I could use water, but if I have slip available, I would prefer to use the slip. And I want to have an excellent connection. So as I squish that on there, I push down pretty heavily. I want that slip to kind of squish out on either side. Now I am going to go ahead and trim away some of the extra there on the base and I'm leaving the edge protrude probably about an eighth of an inch at the base of the wall but notice that I am angling with my knife I'm kind of angling with an a bit of an undercut on this see I'm not holding the knife straight it's an undercut and uh, I like to do that because I think it gives it kind of a nice tidy edge um, and it gives it a little bit more gracefulness as you're uh, 
you know, glazing, you have a little bit of an undercut there underneath it. Now this, I really want it to set up a little bit more before I do much more cleaning. So I'm just going to set that to the side. Ideally, I would just let it sit for like maybe half an hour. Um, but I kind of made a mistake on mine and I let it sit way too long. So mine got a little bit even past the leather hard stage there. It's kind of inching in on close to bone dry. But I can go ahead and clean this up now with a, a stiff bristled paintbrush and water and just repeatedly going back and forth over it. That slip that was kind of bulging out is going to get cleaned up real nicely. It'll fill in any little gaps that I have and this is a great way to clean up uh, the interior. Now the edge on the outside, I'm just taking a stiff rib, maybe a little bit of sponge, but I have to be careful. I don't want to use the sponge too much uh, because you will leave behind large particles of grog. So I might be using the, uh, the stiff rib to take off any chunks, a little bit of sponge to add some water, and then I follow it up, up with my paintbrush. A paintbrush usually does not leave the um, particles of grog behind, but a sponge will. If you sponge groggy clay, it will take away the tiny particles and leave behind the big chunky particles, which I don't want. So there we go. I've got that all cleaned up on the outside, on the inside. You want your craft to look very deliberate and intentional. You know, get rid of any uh, tool marks, finger marks, really, you know, just clean it up. A brush can do wonders for that. So kids, I hope you enjoy this. Um, everyone else, uh, enjoy. Uh, drop me any questions that you might have below and please subscribe. <music>